I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the 27 October Town of Hampton Board of Selections meeting. <sighs> Roman one is public comment. <clears throat> Those wishing public comment, please take the podium. Bob Ladd, Cutler Avenue and Village District Commissioner. I want to thank you, Chairman and members of the board for allowing this opportunity to speak to you. I'd like to address a couple of issues. Flood insurance premium, which are about to go up dramatically, and community rating. We're going through a transitional period and the flood insurance maps will be accepted formally by FEMA September 2015. And I ask you folks to consider mailing a simple notice with the next tax bill that will be sent to all residents, particularly to the residents who are impacted and are in the floodplain, which I understand to be in excess of 2,000 properties. And notifying them that this is the time they should inquire about what they can do, if anything, to mitigate the premium costs going forward. There are provisions for grandfathering, but you have to take affirmative steps prior to the actual implementation of those maps, now scheduled for September 2015, in order to take advantage of them. So if you could just alert the people, particularly those who are most impacted, to inquire of their insurance agents what, if anything, they can or should do at this time, I think it would be uh, appropriate for the community to do that. Not only would you be doing a service for these residents, you'd be doing a service for the town, because to the extent flood insurance premiums are not mitigated going forward, ultimately the assessed value of all these properties would be diminished as it would become more difficult to sell them should you have a very large uh, insurance premium cost, which might be mandated if you have mortgage money involved in buying these properties. So even if you are a present owner with no mortgage and no requirement to have this insurance, you should think ahead a little bit to the time when you may be planning on selling the property, and it could have a very dramatic impact at that point. To my second point, the community rating system. FEMA has created an opportunity for communities to join the community rating system and as such to benefit f potentially from 5 to 45 percent premium reductions in the cost of the flood insurance should the communities comply with certain FEMA mandated requirements, particularly to protect community infrastructure and things of that nature. In that regard, I would again bring to your, my, your attention that you consider creating a community management committee. We presently found a, a model which is used by many communities, which is the police chief or the fire chief become designated as the basic community management manager. That model relates to the past pretty effectively, but going forward because of the FEMA requirements for flood insurance, and the potential extremely high cost of these policies, it has to be broadened out to take into account not just responding to a specific em emergency, but rather planning and anticipating by zoning ordinance and things of that nature going forward. Now that we've hired a town planner and we've created an assistant town manager position, it might be an opportune time to consider that. I don't think it's reasonable to expect a police chief or a fire chief to be preparing zoning ordinances which are core to this community rating system advantage being taken care of, nor do we really expect these people to be sitting there writing grants for uh, FEMA appropriations for these things. If we ask these chiefs to do these things, we're basically taking them from the task the town has hired them to do, which is to provide public safety in the present tense. These are responsibilities more in line with a committee with directly controlled by the town, managed by the town, with members of the planning board and uh, the planner 
and other interested parties involved. I want to take any more of your time, and I appreciate you listening. Thank you, Mr. Ladd. I would just like to say one thing Mr. for Mr. Ladd. Um, I believe, and I, I might be wrong, but I don't <coughs> think so, that there you cannot send notices with the tax bills. Okay. Just so that you know that. Uh, if for, I, I believe that to be accurate as well, but I, I was, I've got a note already to check on that. Yeah, so just that would be to set that out there. We've tried to do it before for other things. and it <clears throat> Mr. Lag, we'll bring this up uh, specifically and address it later on. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your great comments. <clears throat> Any further public comment, please? Further public comment, seeing none. Roman 2, announcements in the community calendar. Selecting this. Um, for those of you who did not make it to the fire department open house on Saturday, it was great. Um, got a little cloudy and blowy later in the in the uh, afternoon, but it was great. Wonderful family turnout, uh, wonderful um, treats, <laughs> and uh, it was uh, I think a very enjoyable uh, day that that uh, everyone had and got to meet some of the uh, members of the fire department, which was very nice. And I liked the eight-year-old son of one of the firefighters, and I asked him if he wanted to grow up to be a brave firefighter like his dad, and he said, no, he wanted to be an Alaska State Trooper. <laughs> so, that, so that shows you. Um, That's the Discovery Channel. The letter yeah. from uh, Jerry Dignam, and we've read a lot of letters from the public lately, and I'm not going to read the whole letter, but Mr. Dignam wrote a very nice thank you note regarding uh, assistance from the Department of Public Works and uh, Chris Jacobs and the crew and Frank Swift uh, helping a very uh, helping uh, implementing a workable correction to a very serious and difficult problem. It was a drainage problem on his road at minimal cost. Their friendly attitude and concern made it a pleasure to work with them. I'm proud as a longtime resident and taxpayer to find that we have such talent in our public works department. A big well done who to all who were involved. So I thought that was a very nice letter. And once again, a week from tomorrow, vote. Voting is not a um, a stand and watch uh, situation. You need to roll up your sleeves and get in. 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Marston School, Tuesday the 4th. Second. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that um, the parking meters will be cease operating at the end of the month oh. and uh, for the winter. And <clears throat> Another thing is, and I'm not sure if anyone here at this table has knows when the meeting is going to be that uh, DOT or DREAD is having down at the beach an informational meeting. Have you heard about that, Jamie? No, I don't think so. I, it's on a Saturday morning between like 9 and 12, and I believe it's a week. It's not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, but I'll hmm. make sure to have the correct time okay. for our next meeting. Okay. <clears throat> A lot of good events going on in town this past week. At Friday was Apple Fest at the uh, Hobbs House with all the seniors. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't, know, I don't, I'm surprised we don't have the ambulance there for, for picking up people with too much sugar because uh, <laughs> seeing some of these seniors going in there with their plates of all their apple goodies. But it was a great time held by all. I want to remind everybody that trick or treat is Friday night, mm -hmm. and we will have little ghosts and goblins running around town. Clocks get changed back next Saturday, so it will be dark while they're out there, so let's be careful. Yep, I want to reiterate what Mary Louise said, that next week is uh, voting day, November 4th, and it's not a spectator sport. Right. Please, know the issues, know the candidates. Also, I'd like to ask the candidates to it, put your signs where you have permission to put your signs. Leave them off the public property. You know, it doesn't do any good just to put them all over the town. And sometimes bef the night before the election, people go out and just place, and it's mostly not Hampton candidates, but mm -hmm. statewide candidates to do it. So yeah. don't mess up the town. Just put them where they're <laughs> supposed to be, where you have permission, and leave them off the public property. Good so point. I think you can put them on public ways. You can. You long can? Long yeah. Long yeah. Long it's public, yes. public land, they can. Yeah. have to take it off. This is different than, right. a di than the a lot change election that we ago. ran. Right. Yeah. Well, I stand corrected, but don't do it. <laughs> 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 nice try. Yeah. Is there any announcements, sir? Um, no, the only thing, uh, not a committee announcement necessarily, I'll do the town manager report. Thank you, sir. Roman 3 consent agenda. One, raffle permit, Hampton Firefighters Toy Bank 50 50 raffle. Also move. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous.
We'll see for either. Roman four appointments two. Ed Tinker, Chief Assessor, Alpha Land Use Change, Tax, Dunbar, Susanna Tetlow, and Michael J. Forty four Timber Swamp Road, sir. Yes. Good evening. Um, yeah, I presented to the board for their approval a land use change tax warrant. Um, it's in relation to a lot line adjustment that took place recently on Timber Swamp Road, resulting in a one acre parcel being cut out of the larger two tracks. Um, but that didn't actually trigger the land use change tax. It, it was sold once the land, lot line adjustment was completed. Now the new owner, as only owning one acre, is, is liable for, or at least the land is liable for a land use change tax, which will be paid by actually the seller. That's what will be billed. I'm sure everyone has read your piece. Selectman Rosie, any questions? No, no questions. Nope. Also. A motion, please. Make it. I'll make a motion that we accept uh, <laughs> <except the, laughs> the, the assessor's yes. I'll recommendation. Second that. Yeah. Bridal Griffin to accept the assessor's recommendation. recommendation on subject property. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, Ed, I have one quick question for you. May I? Just real quick. Penny Malane clear cutting the property. Is that individual liable for timber tax? If it's the one I believe they, they Well, I'm sure you know who it is. We were out there back, it's been over a year, a year or so. Yeah. Um, the amount he cut is allowable under okay. a residential law. Okay. All right, it thank you. It was determined it didn't uh, surpass the allowable <coughs> amount. Thank you, Mr. Chinker. Roman four, number three, Christy Pullian, finance director. Alpha 2014 tax rate, Bravo default budget update, Charlie September financials director. Okay, it's got me for a few more minutes than normal <laughs> <laughs> Um We hope to have be setting the 2014 tax rate, um, hopefully by the end of this week, beginning of next week at the very latest, uh, so the tax bills can uh, get out and be due prior to the end of uh, 2014. Uh, it's important for, I think, everyone to remember that when we're setting this, we're actually setting the 2014 tax rate, which is a reflection on the Warren Articles and the budget and everything that passed back in March of this year. So it doesn't have anything to do with the current budget that we are working on, and there seemed to be some confusion around that. So I just wanted to make sure everyone understood that. Our best estimate at this point for the town portion, based on all of the Warren articles that were passed along with the budget, there would be a rate increase of 67 cents on the tax rate. So it would go from 704 to 771. It was only the municipal portion, just for the town, which is a 9.6% increase. I did give you guys all a packet you should have, and there's some breakdowns with some spreadsheets showing you all of what I'm going to go over here. Um, Mike discussed with the board back in March some of the um, this increase would be mitigated by applying some of the unassigned fund balance to the tax rate. This would help to offset the tax rate and increase for the town. It has been the town's practice to stay within the minimum recommendation of both DRA and the New Hampshire Governmental Financial Officers Association, which is somewhere in the 5 to 8 percent range. If the board wishes to do so, they can decrease the unassigned fund balance by $1 million. This would reduce the estimated 2014 tax rate to $7.44, or 5.7 percent increase over 2013. Um, the million dollars does sound like a lot compared to what has been done in the past, but it is made up of $500,000 from the NextEra settlement. Right now, um, in the reserve for contingency fund, a uh, set amount was set aside for that settlement. We settled for less than what they had expected to, so that money will be coming back into the unassigned fund balance at the end of the year. So that would be 500 of the million. The other 300,000 um, would come from revenues and 200 in under expenditures. Um, that's just our best guess at this point for where we're going to end the year. Uh, another option, if the board only wished to use the 500k from the next year settlement, it would uh, 
reduced the estimated 2014 tax rate to $7.62 or 8.3% increase over the 2013. I have discussed this with Fred prior to him leaving for his hip operation because of the fact that he and Mike had brought this to you guys back in March and he and I both are very comfortable with giving you the guidance if you so choose to take the million from the unassigned fund balance. It'll still keep us within the DRA and the NHGFOA recommendations if you guys do want to do that. And it would increase, like I said before, the tax rate to $7.44, which is only 40 cents more than what it is right now. Um, the actual impact on the average single family assessed value home uh, would be it would be for this year for their impact would be two hundred and twenty one dollars if you don't do anything to offset to increase to decrease unassigned fund balance or um, one hundred and thirty two dollars if you were if you did choose to take the million dollars from the unassigned fund balance so that is what I have on that topic for the two thousand and fourteen tax rate. If you guys do wish to do that, we would need a motion because what happens is when DRA calls to set the tax rate, that's when I have to give them the guidance on what we wish to do. You know, so a decision does need to be made. So, Thank you, director, specifically regarding uh, Alpha 2014 tax rate, so let me ask you. Christy, what is the exact amount as we're here now? of the unassigned fund bill. We only have it at the end of 2013 because that's all what the auditors give and it was 4.8. Okay. I'm sorry? 4.819. It was 4,819,000 and... So that's what we'd be pulling from? That's where you would be pulling from, and yes. DRA is requiring us to do the, what, just under 3%? So just that would give us what? DRA is 5%, and if you look at last year's, we only have last year's numbers from DRA right now, but last year the 5% based on the expenditures and stuff was 2.8, and the 8% was 4.49. No, so in the end of the year last year, we actually ended up a little bit higher. Thank you, than and even Director and Selectman, just for um, clarification, the 5% you referred to for the public's knowledge refers to what? To the, what DRA's recommendation is for the... Um, for the fund balance for 5%. the unassigned, yes, 5%, they five percent of what? Of your of the expenditures of the fund. Thank yeah. you. Um, okay, proceeding on that because I'm trying to to figure this out. Four point eight one nine minus the two point eight or two point nine. And I'm not. I haven't got my calculator or whatever. What would that leave What's us the with? Two point nine. Well, she said 2.8 is the 5%, 2.8, 2.9, we'll call it even 3 million. All right, so that would leave 1,819,000 roughly. No. No? I think the, the well, 2.8 okay, so is the 5% minimum yes. recommendation of DRA. And for contingencies in case something right, terrible the, happens so we have a little cushion. Correct. And okay. Yeah. So and I'm, then the 8% is the 4.4. I don't care about 8%. Okay. They're not going to get 8% out of us. Okay. But what have we got left over that we could throw into the pot at tax rate setting? Just given those figures, end of 2013. If it's around 1.5 million, I want to make a recommendation. You're a lot better with the calculator than I am. <laughs> so you want to know the well, the, the minimum, which is the two. Well, what's no. left? Um, what's what's left after you set aside the five percent? I did not bring that calculation because these are only based on what last year's numbers were. I, I, I don't. We, well, we're using last year's numbers, but just two point eight minus four point eight is going to give us around two million, gotcha. right? Yes. That is true. It's 4.819. Okay, yep. what I'm thinking of is this, and it, it's just a thought, but I want to run it by you. I agree with surrendering the one million. I've always felt that the taxpayers in this year that have surplus uh, available should have it to offset their tax rate. However, I was looking at debt service, and I identified three items, a 1999 wastewater treatment plant, that's an SRF, the 2005 herd farm and the 2005 beach infrastructure. 382425 which includes interest on the 99 wastewater treatment. 
2005 Herd Farm, we owe 103114 That includes interest as well. And the 2005 Beach Infrastructure, 37286 That comes to $522,825. What I'd like to do is take the e extra money, if you will, that we'll find when you take the 2.8 from the 4.8 and kill those three debts. And we should save money on interest, I'm thinking, because well, I think one has one year left, one has two years left. If we can get rid of those three off the debt service, pay them off, save a little on interest, and, and start clearing the decks in the debt service, you did a great job consolidating. <laughs> But while we have the money, I would like to see us basically terminate and pay off those three items using that extra half million. So I'm just throwing it out for you. But I would like to see us clear. If you look under your debt service, you'll pinpoint those. And I, I'll be more specific. I think you know which ones. Yeah, I need. just pulled out the budget, so I yeah. do know which ones. You're, yeah. Two of them are expiring next year in right. 15. Those are the last payments that are due on yeah. two but of those. What, my theory, why leave them hanging like that, small you know, item, when we, when it looks like we have the money this year to clear them off the books, even if we save a couple of thousand in interest on each of them, just it's taxpayer money, and then get that debt service down. So that's my speech. Thank you. Further questions for discussion? No. I'm, I'm prepared to uh, make the uh, recommendation of taking the one million. Okay. Can we just move yeah. the board, move it around the board, please? Sir. 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 Uh, that was a good explanation of, you know, to people, I think, to realize how the tax rate set and stuff, which I think is important. And uh, I agree with taking something to, you know, because it's the taxpayer's money mm -hmm. to give it back to the taxpayers rather than keeping it. But, you know, I want to make sure that structurally, financially, we're in good shape. And weren't there some things in the financial audit that talked about some funds that weren't uh, being funded or, or were not funded enough right now? So I, I just worry that, you know, I, I want to make sure that structurally we're in, structurally in good shape, that we're not taking money now to make the tax rate more uh, agreeable and then later on down the road, we end up with something like, hmm, we should have been doing something else. So, so th th that's what I'm just throwing out. And I, I, I don't know if that's too broad in general of what I'm throwing out, but I think that's important that we think about that mm -hmm. before we just go spending money. And right now we're at a really low interest rate, aren't we? Yes, we are so, at a very low interest rate. Yeah, I mean, so is it wise to, to, to well, pay off a debt right now or, or not? There's 4% so, on this one. 4% on that one, 3.8. Those are the three. Right there. All right, that's what I have. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. Look at them. There, there's uh, a motion in the waiting and, uh, to address uh, Selectman Waddell's point. It was on page 11 of last year's audit. It's the compensated uh, lead balance. We're out over a million dollars on that. Uh, research has been done that by the finance director, mm -hmm. Selectman Waddell, which is a great point. And uh, there, there's discussion that that needs to be on a warrant article. That's not fully staffed yet, but that's not part of your course of action, your initial course of action that you talked to tonight. Because this unassigned fund balance cannot be used to just fund that okay. compensated absence fund. It would need to be put through as a warrant article. Um, the only vehicle right now to fund that would be the employee separation and the buyback. If there's any money left in that, when the fund was set up through a vote in 2012, Warren, I believe, it was set up that m whatever money was left at there at the end of the year. So if we wanted to do it through any other vehicle, it would need to be sent out as a Warren article. Thank you. And that doesn't mean it still can't be done. And there still could possibly be money available to do that. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Director. A motion? I, I made the motion to do the $1 million that okay. has been recommended by Christy and um, Fred and the former uh, finance director. Yep. I did consult with him also okay. on that. Okay. A second. A second. Griffin, Bridal, all those in favor? No. All those opposed? Uh, no, I'm in favor of that, but I think we're missing an opportunity on that debt service. So all those in favor, it is unanimous. <clears throat> Thank you. Bravo. Default budget update directly. Default budget. Um, in your mailboxes today, you received... <laughs> 
the health insurance numbers, which is what we were waiting for, um, for the default budget. I've been here for 16 years, and I heard Rusty say something about his 35 years, and Jamie will can probably contest to some of those years, and none of us have ever seen an actual decrease, but um, we did receive a decrease in our insurance rate, ranging from 8 point, a negative, I'm sorry, 8.6%, as high as a negative 13.2%. Um, so today I did the numbers, took the actual health insurance as of today, did an average of the plans that are being used by our active employees, and came up with an 8.6% 8 8 decrease, which I have taken off of the proposed, or what we have for actuals for today, and plugged a new number into the health insurance line. So it went from, wrote all of this down. It went from, it was proposed at 2,999,454 and it's going down to 2,636,021 dollars. So it ends up being um, 363,433 less than the BOF budget that was put forward because we used the 7% increase like we normally would do. So um, that is in the default budget and is in front of you guys tonight. I know you didn't get it till today, so I don't know if you are comfortable voting on it, but if you do, then we can pass it along to the budget committee who is anxiously awaiting its arrival. Thank you, Director. And just one second for clarification, I'm going to go right to you, Selectman Wilson. You, we were pending uh, establishment of the default for the health insurance rates. You have those. And the default with those figures is? In, in your mailboxes. Oh, okay. the amount. Sorry. <laughs> I can yeah. get that for you. There. That's an answer for you. <laughs> uh, the def default is 26,507. 26 million. 26 million. Yeah, not thousand. 26 million five hundred seven thousand ninety seven dollars is the default. Okay. We have that number. We have the health insurance rates. Select and visit. Yeah, I, I have two items here. First of all, in the health trust, from 2003 to 2009, the health trust and LGC <coughs> held back from repaying this town surplus funds, and that is a legal issue that has yet to be tackled. So it's very nice to see lower figures, but by George, uh, they probably owe the town a heck of a lot more money than that. Number two, in the default budget, because mm -hmm. I can't tell from these pages, yep. have you factored in the new assistant town manager position in that, so the positions are set in Because they're in the budget year, now, yeah. So that there's no question. There should not be any question. Yet of next year's, uh, um, when we get to next year, if yep. this should happen. Okay. So those are locked in. All right, yep. Christy, thank you very much. Sir. No questions right now. I think it's excellent that a lot of hard work went into reducing that. Mm. It's not only the, the property liability trust and all the issues we had, but it's also our employees mm -hmm. who <coughs> have been working very hard to work at their, their own health insurance and, and their own needs. And, right. and we look at some of the other stuff like workers' comp, and I believe that's down some. Yes, it was down slightly. So that uh, our employees are healthier. So they're not using as much of the insurance. And so that's another reason why it went down too. So good job. Excellent. I, I agree with Rusty, you know, that, that the employees doing their part to keep it down is really, really important. And that, that helps tremendously. And historically it's been that way. Yeah, that's good. There is a uh, recommendation or, or uh, an assertion by the uh, <coughs> finance director of a default budget of $26,507,097. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. And Griffin, Waddell, all those in favor? Unanimous. Could, could I just make one more yes, comment as you were, you were talking about the tax rate, Christy? Yes. There are, we have not done the reval yet. That's going to take place next year. But nevertheless, there are properties, and there's been a lot of building, that are coming online in this tax year, and that will have an impact of lowering some of the overall tax base. So it's not like the same tax base without factoring in the new builds. 
that that is going to take the, the hit. When I, when I um, prepared my estimates of what I believe mm -hmm. DRA will have, I did use the new um, valuation of property that Ed gave me, that he did on his MS1 that you guys voted on about a month or two ago, I think, in early September maybe. Uh -huh. So I did put the new val um, valuation in there for this, for 14. Now next year it could also increase. As like of April saying, yep. 1st, 2014? <coughs> yes, the yes. thing he just did, right. yeah. Okay, yeah. good. And also I just want to note when we're talking about the default budget, when you guys look at the last page, you'll see that it's reflecting that the default budget is only is nine hundred and forty two thousand seven hundred eighty five above the board of selectmen's budget and that's not really fair because your guys budget doesn't reflect the new health insurance rate so really the difference between the budget that you guys have presented and the default budget is five hundred and seventy nine thousand three hundred fifty two so that's pretty close so i just wanted to point that out because it's a big difference because your budget didn't change because we didn't get to change the health insurance numbers. Right. So. Thank you, Director. Okay. Moving on, uh, to Charlie, September financials. Right. September financials. This will be the simple oh. part, right? Uh, that's the ninth report of 2014. The expenditure target is 75%. The month's total income was 471000 Of that total, motor vehicles came in at 258000 which is 35,000 above the monthly budget, and it now puts motor vehicles uh, 254,000 above budget for the year. The other major contributors to the month's total were building permits at 23,000, parking lots at 36,000, departmental income at 67,000, interest on taxes at 51,000, and real estate trust at 34,000. Uh, the expense summary at the end of September, the operating departments without debt service but with open POs were 74.35% of the budget, which is lower by 148000 than the month's 75% target. So we're back in line with how we've been running. Last month we were a little bit over, but now we're back into where we've been running consistently all year. Uh, the finance, the postage account continues to run ahead of budget and the uh, Registry of Deeds is now at 107.39% of the budget, but that's not anything that we have control over in our department. In the management information system, the four equipment related accounts, um, through September they are at 70.8% of their budget. Personnel administration is now within the target budget of 72 at 72.74%. The planning board is running over budget at 87 percent but when you combine it with the office of planning they are within their but within the target they're at 69.6 percent so uh, the police department is at 72.34 percent overall with when you include open POs the fire department is at 72 percent overall when the open POs are included and the four fire suppression OT accounts are at 62.2 percent of the annual budget Highways and Streets is running slightly above target at 79% with the open POs are included and this is partly related to the need for seasonal help in the summer so hopefully they will come back within budget. Municipal Sanitation is now running running close to target at 75.4 when the open portion of the annual PO for chemicals is used in the calculation. Parks and Recreation is over target at 76.5% but that's to be expected since the summer is now over, so they'll not have all of the extra help. Uh, the warrant articles that were passed at town meeting, all the social services have now been paid. Um, I believe it was anyone that was over 10, I think. We broke them into two payments, but those payments have been made now, so social services are all paid in full for those warrant articles. Um, the accounting for the 2013 encumbrances uh, showing that 69% have been expended to date. Uh, the majority of the remaining 104,000 is um, made up of the INI study, the codification project, and the Exeter High, High Street uh, Road purchase order there. The, in, the in the special revenue funds, the recreation fund, the beach sticker donations year to date equal 15000 and we awarded $26,000 worth of scholarships so far this year from the, um, that beach sticker program that they have in place. And there was nothing notable in cable, private detail, or EMS for September. So 
that is all I had on that. I also um, was asked to provide a breakdown to the board, which I have given you in regards to the savings related to the um, assistant town manager slash HR director. Mm -hmm. um, you will see that it's being compared to the position that has been removed from the legal budget, which was the assistant town attorney slash HR coordinator. And um, you can see from what I have given you, it looks to be right around $7,000, the savings related to those two positions. I think um, Fred was using about 5000 I think that was related to some offset in an increase in the um, administrative assistance hours. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a chance to calculate that, but that would probably be right, my guess would be it would be right in that $2,000 range. So you can see that um, I have broken down the actual uh, projected salary in the 2015 budget for Wanda's position, which has the health insurance, the life insurance, retirement, and compared that um, to the assistant town manager slash HR director. We won't have the retirement will be taken off of there. No health insurance, which you can see on the sheet is $23,000 just for the health insurance alone. Um, so I have provided that breakdown for all of you tonight to show the exact savings on that. <coughs> Thank you, Director. Selectman Wilson. No, nothing. You've done a great job, and you're probably going to be very happy when it gets to be March. <laughs> I probably am, actually. <laughs> I will be very happy. Sir. Thank you for your report. Great. Sir. As always, an excellent report. Good Sorry, report, and everything's on track? It appears to be. We're back in so line, it looks like. You're looking ahead, looks like everything. I'm looking ahead. I meant to today to actually do some forecasting, and I just flat out ran out of time. But that is my next goal. I will be um, definitely providing forecasting to you for end of year, just as Mike had done. And it was a goal today, but it wasn't met. But I will, as soon as I have it done, I will send it to you, and then I will present it at the next meeting. Thank you. For Good the job. public. If you come in with a crystal ball, though, you're going to scare us. I won't. <laughs> I have no crystal balls. <laughs> Director, so, thank you very much. Can I add one item? I also had provided you guys at last minute again, but the revenue budget. Um, yes. Mike and I have, not Mike, Fred and I have reviewed this uh, revenue budget. Nothing, there isn't really any surprises in there. I was able to get some information from the state of New Hampshire, which lists out uh, our state aid water pollution grants and the landfill grants and the amounts that we are to be receiving for the next several years, and I've plugged those in. And if you guys wish to approve this, I could also pass this along to the Budget Committee. Um, so you have it. I don't know if you guys are able to do that tonight or if you want to wait till your next meeting, but that is another item that I know the Budget Committee is waiting for. And Fred and I were just waiting for me to receive information back from um, DES and from um, another state agency, I can't think of the name right now, in regards to the landfill grant and in regards to the state aid water pollution grants. Mm -hmm. And I have all of those firm documents now, so we plug those numbers in um, just this week. So, so SRF included in there, Christy, because I don't have a chance yes. to digest the yep. whole thing. Okay. Yeah, that's what we were waiting for, the different really in regards to those, yeah, for the wastewater pollution. Money. So. so do we... I don't know if you guys voted on that in the past. I honestly don't know. I just know that it was supposed to come before you before I pass it on to the budget committee. I think we did. So I would have to look to you guys for more guidance on that, I guess. Thank you. Uh, I think we should put that off till next meeting. Okay. That's fine with okay. you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Right. And have a great evening, Director. Thank you. Excellent work. Thanks. Thank you. Enrollment 5 is approval of minutes, 1, October 9, 2014, non-public session and public session. I uh, will so move the non-public session, assuming that they are, um, it is proper to release now. Okay. A second. Second. Roll Z, bridal, all those in favor? Unanimous. Not now, I'll move the minutes of the regular meeting of October 9. The public session. The second? I'll second it. We'll see Waddell, all those in favor. Unanimous. On the sixth town manager's report, sir. Uh, first and foremost, uh, contact with uh, Mr. Welch. He's doing very well. Uh, he continues his convalescence. Um, 
Uh, just ask them, make sure to notify the board uh, and start thinking about a schedule for who uh, is going to attend at the polls at the various times. Uh, probably important to put that together. And um, also, we made our first, second, and third pass, I think, at the Warren articles. So if that's okay with the board, we'll be prepared to start introducing those to you um, at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. All right, council's gone through them. They're being reviewed with those revisions and should be ready for you to start tackling them, I think, in the mm -hmm. next meeting, if that's what you'd like. Thank that's you. That's it, sir. Thank you, sir. Second, Wilson. Yeah, I have the warrant articles as a note on here because we've got to get going and do something on these, and some of them need to be taken off. Mm, sir. Um, <coughs> what about the uh, at the polls? Or Polls, we're going to uh, staff that uh, in, in accordance with state law, and it will be day on, stay on for some people. Uh, those that can participate, great. We can um, go ahead and shoot that frag order and, and uh, staff it up. I'm ready. I'm willing to make I know you are. Mary Louise, are you six. working that day? I'm working every day. Okay. Uh, right. I can do I'm six available. to eight days. If you want, okay. if you'll I send me what your availability is, I'll the develop the schedule for you and yeah. put that back out. We can finalize it at the next meeting yeah. if that works for you. Perfect. Okay. So just shoot me an email. Six to eight. Six to eight. Good yeah. enough, sir. I can come yeah. at the end of the day mm -hmm. and okay. stay up to the signing time. Well, let me know when you need me there. <clears throat> Very good, sir. He's he's not a candidate this year. This Rick, time. what's the end of the day time for you? Same with you. Um, Same with you. Pretty much around yeah. five o'clock. Okay. And if there's no one for early in the morning, I can come seven to nine too. Very good. Roman 7, New Business, Whatever. one Board of Selectmen Representative, Hampton Beach Area Commission Term Exploration. Mr. Sullivan, any comments on that? Lead us on that? If not, we'll go to the board. Are there any recommendations? No, there was a letter that came in from the chair for the board to consider it. Mr. Griffin has served in that role for a number of years, and assuming he wishes to continue. Yeah, I, I do enjoy being there, and uh, I live there and have 52 years, so I think I have some value to add to that. Thank you, sir, and thank you for your, your volunteering for that. A motion, please? I'll move that we nominate Rick for the, Second. For the Hampton Bridal. Beach Area Commission. Thank you, sir. Bridal Waddell, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Roman 8, Old Business, Selecting Wilson. Well, uh, I learned a few more things at the uh, fire open house on Sunday and one that I want to share with you and I ran it by Rusty uh, very briefly. I had a, a lengthy conversation with Peter Wall who's the EMS um, officer and one thing we really are not keeping track of and I think we should is the walk-in medical assistance in the fire department both at the beach station and the uptown station. We have two beautiful rooms now that are well equipped for emergency medical care for individuals. And I think we should uh, get an idea, first of all, what the volume is and what times of year, if that's relevant, but probably especially for the beach station in the summer. Um, also, the possibility of uh, whether or not insurance might be a factor in some of the treatments that are going on and also the concept of staffing. For example, if a firefighter uh, is tending to Rusty who just cut his foot um, in the ocean on a shell uh, and uh, an emergency call rings, that's going to hold up potentially a little bit of, uh, for a little bit of time, you know, for a man uh, getting out. There's also a courtesy transport that's been going on, I'm sure, for many years, uh, police or fire or whoever's handy, because if someone uh, needs uh, to get back to his motel two blocks away and his foot is cut, instead of having them limp up the street, there's a uh, little uh, understanding that people would be helped. Uh, that's another facet with Phil discussing the um, responsibility of the state of New Hampshire uh, regarding summertime at the beach and the burdens that are placed on this community. So I thought it was interesting. Uh, it seems that there is an ability to track. It's not a system that's put in place yet. I talked to Chief Ayotte briefly and uh, I think that this would add another dimension to our understanding and to the public's understanding of the mission uh, that the fire department performs. 
Um, I had Warren articles on my list, but the assistant town manager beat me to it. But uh, my one big thought on the uh, Warren articles, especially since we received this tonight, I'm ready to recommend that we pull the proposed bond article. And I can, we can talk about this next week for the Exeter Road. Um, construction, I don't like to see that happen, but I am not comfortable at all with the engineering that's taken place here. So I'm just throwing that out on the table as a thought and we can chew it around next week. And my last comment under old business is revenue. 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 Um, we can't run our households without revenue. And I would like to see us focusing more on revenue. I think it's only fair to the taxpayers. And one of the big things that I have in mind is the impact fees that the planning board asked to be allowed to assess in 2002 and they were given permission to assess impact fees and they have in fact assessed impact fees for the schools but they have consistently stubbornly refused to assess muni impact fees look at all the building we're going we've got going on in the town and at the beach and there seems to be a feeling that nobody wants to tax developers well this is happening in our town and i think like the sewer buy-in fee I think that it's up to us maybe to, maybe we could encourage or send a letter to the planning board or, or uh, drop a hint or something that it really would be a help to this town if we could start seeing impact fees from municipal projects. Look at this, we've built the fire stations, we've built the police station, and they're off the table now. They're <coughs> in the past. We can't assess muni impact fees on those bills, and that's a shame. We've lost a lot of revenue here. So I just would like you to think about that a little bit and see if we can do a little lobbying to try to bring in more revenue to help offset the tax rates, particularly at the rate the town is growing. Oh, and, as, and Mr. Land's comment too earlier, I believe the manager has, I believe I saw a draft of an article to go on the warrant, and I don't see it in the list tonight, but to uh, get the ask the town to vote to comply with the FEMA regulations and so forth. Um, I think that would be the community rating system. Mm -hmm. I believe that Fred had that targeted so that we would include that on there because it is critical. People are going hysterical over the and, flood and, rates. And as you raise that issue right now, if we can jump in on the order, if uh, mm -hmm. we can schedule this specifically for an agenda item next week, we can dot the I's, cross the T's. Is Excellent. that satisfactory to you, Mr. Lynn? Absolutely. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. And we'll, we'll, we will not address it anymore tonight. We'll address it as an agenda item next week. Can he come and be part of our discussion? Absolutely. Oh, yes. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. That would be good. Early this year. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're right, though, Bob. It's really important for the oh, community. Yeah. For everyone. Selectman Griffin. Now, I commend Mr. Ladd for bringing that. Thank you. Selectman Griffin. Nothing in the old business. Uh, Old business, I, I just agree that we're going to talk about Exeter Road probably next week or something, and mm. yet I think it's something that needs to be addressed, need to be discussed in Absolutely. detail. Uh, and, and I agree on the looking at revenues and stuff, that, it, but I agree in looking up on overall oh, sure. structure of, of our finances and stuff, and just after we're through this, making sure that things are structurally in good shape and that we're bringing, you know, looking for revenue, but looking for it all over the place rather than one specific thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I have one item under old business, and it, it does concern uh, what the uh, finance mm -hmm. director discussed tonight, and that was the uh, replacement of the human resources and personnel director uh, and the untimely loss of uh, um, Wanda, <coughs> who served as an attorney and served in that department. And I think uh, the appointment of uh, Jamie, if I may, uh, to fill those those shoes uh, in, in personnel and in human resources speaks to the tremendous leadership uh, pool and talent and bench that this town has in, in, in departments and that we, we were able to uh, fill those shoes and do so at a cost savings and we, we, we did so uh, and we reinforced the command element uh, we reinforced the uh, extraordinary succession planning that uh, has gone under the uh, prior boards 
uh, in the selection and uh, the recruiting of department heads and the town manager, Mr. Welch, who's made some of those appointments himself. Uh, it enhanced our operational capability. Uh, it's been a force multiplier for the return on investment for the taxpayer, the shareholder in this town. Uh, and it has done so in an extraordinary way. And if this was a private sector business, it would be a, a, a fantastic recruiting accomplishment. Uh, we filled those two spots. In addition, as you see tonight, that uh, uh, Jamie is hot seating for the town manager. Uh, it's been a seamless transition, and it's brought in uh, extensive leadership capabilities in terms of the personnel and human resources aspect. Uh, the assistant town manager has extensive labor uh, relations uh, experience, both from the union side, of which he was a member, and from management side, leading the Hampton Police Department. It's uh, a tenure of uh, magnificent and sterling, scintillating uh, executive leadership and a municipal platform that, that is now approaching 30 years. And this is a, uh, a department, the town of Hampton Police Department, working in one of the most dynamic, challenging uh, uh, platforms in the state of New Hampshire, period. So uh, uh, Mr. Sullivan is a Hampton resident. His children uh, are Hampton residents. They have gone through the Hampton school systems. Again, he sits here tonight and hot seats us. Uh, and again, it has been a seamless operational transition. And in a time of need, he is simply here in, in um, uh, interesting times for the town of Hampton leadership positions. And uh, he's been a calming influence. So we appreciate that. There have been questions about that in the community that are right, rightfully questioned when we, when we make these decisions. This was a unanimous uh, Board of Selectmen decision. Uh, it was one that came about quickly because of the, the uh, passing of Wanda. And it was uh, her untimely death that, that uh, led to this, this development. But uh, the notion of uh, we created a new position of the assistant town manager uh, simply is uh, one that doesn't require any new funds. Uh, it is done for free, if you will, and that is an unusual accomplishment in a, a coup, if you will. So I just wanted to emphasize those points. Mr. Welch did discuss this prior to his departure, and as the chair and of the board in our discussions, we felt the same way, so I just wanted to put that out publicly. That's my comment for old business. Roman 9, barring any other uh, comments, we have closing comments. Any? I just would like to say that I think you put that very well. well, well the way that you worded everything is exactly, I think, the way the board feels. Wonderful. Thank, thank you. you. And, and thank we you liked both. scintillating on this side. Scintillating, yeah, that was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there is. Uh, just before you go on, folks. Yes, ma'am. Well, and also, in a situation like this, in a town of this size with the stress factor, of management, this is giving the the manager an opportunity to recover from his surgery without all the stress and worry, and knowing that the town is in in good hands. Uh, are you going to? Are we going to have a non-public after this evening? I I hadn't planned that. No. I, I okay. No. And are we at some point in time going to make an announcement on the commencement of the uh, uh, requested union negotiations? Well, interestingly enough, the um, uh, uh, Thursday afternoon, and, and I'll get with uh, uh, Mr. Sullivan on that, Thursday afternoon I've dedicated every Thursday afternoon as the negotiator or for the, the board. And now with these health insurance rates finalized, that is uh, really great news to bring in a negotiation. So I anticipate that to be starting up any time that um, the union and, and Mr. Sullivan work out together. and I'm available. And, and that extends past Thursdays, but Thursday specifically. Excellent. Um, thank, thank you. I have one thing I forgot to bring you earlier. Uh -oh. uh, I'll bring it up next week because it's before November 6th, but the uh, the annual Firefighters Chili Cook-Off okay. is on November 6th uh, at 6 p.m. at Wally's Pub. All the money raised there goes to the Toys for Tots. I mean, excuse me. I should never say that because I've been so long. The, the Hampton Firefighters Toy Bank. Yeah. Uh, uh, each year they raise many dollars, uh, and each year they do well over 250 children in Hampton mm -hmm. alone yeah. uh, for Christmas that may not have toys. So uh, the chili cook-off is a good event. There's always a lot of good chili down there. It's a good chance to get down and, and get some good chili and sponsor a good event. That actually comes back to the children of Hampton. So. Wonderful. Good. Thank you. A motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Second. Miguel Griffin, all those time, in favor. Time, 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 time. I have. Uh
1950. 1950. <laughs> Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you.